Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Space Exploration with Infactorio. I've, before I go off into space I thought I'd just demonstrate these uh, new laser turrets I've built up. So what better way to do that than to uh, start shelling out, shelling some biter bases to, give them, to get them um, all excited and, and uh, have, some, have, have a bit of an assault happen on my base. So uh, that was rather a small one actually, I don't know if that really counts. Here we go, there's a few of them coming in now and some green ones as well which is, um, they're, they're the tougher ones. So this, see how this goes. Yeah, the turrets fired, but I feel like most of this is being done by the um, by the machine gun turrets. Although that's I don't know, they're firing quite a bit, so they're, they're not doing too badly. Let's um, step this up a gear and try shelling sh shelling somewhere slightly larger, so we get a slightly bigger attack in, shall we? Yeah, so I think attacking this nest should cause a bit more of a uh, reaction. Let's find out how this goes. So this is using the artillery remote, which lets you shoot quite a bit further. And I can, if I um, start shelling them drastically like this, as you can see on the, the from the red blobs on the radar, there's yeah quite a lot of biters heading my way now. <laughs> and the more I shell the base, the more I should get of them. But then it's not really worth only part part damaging the base. You might as well try and take the whole thing out in one go. Uh, let's just spray it all over with them um, with shells. That'll do. Yep, they're definitely starting to swarm. Right, here comes the first wave. There's no green ones in this one, so I should be able to rip through them fairly easily, even with just, well, either type of turret. Makes a pretty light show, though. Now, as you probably noticed, the laser turrets have a significantly longer range than the uh, bullet turrets, which is, um, so, which is why I don't feel too bad about putting them behind. Maybe that's the wrong way of dealing with it. Maybe the, maybe the uh, laser turret should form a first wall with the uh, bullet turrets behind them, I'm not sure. But they dealt with that attack fairly easily. But oh, here comes a much bigger one. Let's see how this goes. And there's a lot of green ones in this one as well. And they're the ones that are dangerous because those are the ones that can soak up huge amounts of damage before they uh, eventually collapse. So here they come. Picking off the easy ones first. <laughs> with the red from the lasers and the green from the machine gun turrets because they're using green ammo. It's almost like some sort of uh, light show. Oh no, what? Ah! Oh. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, what happened there was um, I was standing a bit too close to the uh, front line, and the, uh, the the biters managed to pelt me enough. That, or, sorry, the spitters managed to pelt the general area I was standing in enough that the floor became toxic and acidic and horrible, and eventually killed me. So, um, yeah, I um, might have learnt my lesson. <laughs> So moving onwards, the main thing behind it for this episode is going to be launching this rocket. But before I do, I just want to touch on something about that um, that fight that you just saw me horribly uh, <laughs> lose horrifically. Uh, I did go back over there afterwards and picked up the uh, picked up all my inventory again, so I've got it all back back now. But the big difference between these turrets is the gun turrets, with the at least with the um, the uranium ammunition, have a shooting speed of 10 plus 8 per second, so 18 per second. I assume that means. Um, and they do damage of 24 plus 37, so that's what 40, 34 plus 60, 61 and a bit. And I'm assuming that's every bullet, because it doesn't have a per second on there. So the DPS is going to be astronomical. It's going to be 80, 18 times um, 60, whatever I said. Uh, and that's quite a lot. You look at one of these uh, laser turrets, they shoot at about just under 3, uh, three per second. And they do about 40... 42 damage uh, per shot so the DPS from that is going to be much much lower and so that's why even though I've got this massive long wall of laser turrets I still definitely need to keep in the bullet turrets as well. I think in hindsight what I probably should do is either alternate them or perhaps put the laser turrets in front of the uh, norm in front of the bullet turrets and that way the um, the laser turrets can be can uh, can t pick off all the, uh, the the relatively easy enemies, the blue ones and the brown ones, and um, and just just take t take them out quickly and easily. And then we can use the bullet turrets on the tougher ones, the green ones, because they when they get a bit closer. The worry about that um, is whether the the um, range of the bullet turrets is going to be sufficiently more than the range of the green spitters in order to make sure that the green spitters don't take out the laser turrets. Um, that will remain to be seen. I, I, I'm going to have to do some more experiments with that. Anyway, 
back to the actual exciting part to the rocket so I've decided I'm not gonna th I've, I've spent a bit of time thinking about all the stuff I might need when I go up there so we've got these um, life support packs that I was talking about we're making loads of the um, the scaffoldings here that are being all being packed into the rocket and there's almost a thousand in there now and I've also started making these space assembly machines, which are basically normal assembly machines plus some electric motors and other things that apparently means they work in space. So and who am I to argue? I've also put in some um, some solar and some accumulators. I don't think I'll need the accumulators because the solar should work all the time. But just in general, that seems like a good thing to have in the rocket. And so I've loaded this up. As, as I was discussing in the last episode, we've got a load of the scaffolding. We've got a rocket silo for building another rocketing if I need it. We've got a landing pad for... for um, for landing another a future rocket on space capsule for um, making again for making the rocket got the, the energy and the, um, the assembly machines I was talking about a load of the um, what do you call it cargo rocket sections again for building another rocket and some spare uh, life support canisters just to make sure I don't die while I'm up there I've also got rid of a load of the stuff from my inventory into this box here the, this is all the stuff that won't work that I've either got too much of or just won't work in space. So things like um, I don't know this 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 furnace for example it can't be placed on a space platform. So there's no point in taking it up with me. I might as well keep my inventory a little bit more empty, just in case I, all I can bring back is the stuff that's in my inventory. I do have some boxes to put to put things in while I'm up there though. In fact, let's take one of them as well. Uh, so yes, and in here so I've got the landing platform as landing pad as I said. So I'll put that out once I get up there. So hopefully my second rocket will actually land in one piece. Um, and yeah, I, I did. I had a look through FNEI and looking at the rocket science packs and how to make these. And you need machine learning data, which is made in a supercomputer, which it turns out can only th these things will only, will only work in space. They don't look too difficult to make, but I thought rather than trying to make all of these things and going up and going uh, and, and just biting off all, everything at once, let's take a little step at a time. Let's go up there and, and have a bit of a look around and see how that go and see how that goes. So I'm going to get in, in here. Now there's a couple of other things appear. So I've got 42 cargo in in my rocket out of 500. So the my complaints earlier about not having enough space are, are currently unfounded, but I'll probably need it more later. Um, the life support I've, I've got some canisters in my inventory now, as you can see here. There's 49 of them left, and one's been dirtied, but it's but it's boosted this bar up to here. So now I've got uh, one minute 40 uh, from that particular from that one canister, and from the rest of my inventory I've got a an hour and 21 minutes, and that's longer than I intend to be up there for. But then there's some more in the rocket as well, just in case I need it. Um, so launch is set to manual. I've set it for Norvis orbit. Let's go. Let's see what happens. This is both exciting and terrifying. <laughs> Right, so my rocket has disintegrated as promised, uh, but my um, my little pod has managed to land quite successfully. My uh, flying robots still work, which is quite nice. Uh, these are being deconstructed. Ooh, oh, <laughs> I just fell off. Luckily, I have a jetpack, otherwise I'd be in a lot of trouble. Um, okay, so I, right, so you can run around, but if you fall off, then you end up with a sort of slow jetpack thing or I can press turn the jetpack on and fly around as if I was on the saving <laughs> as if I was actually on the planet okay now where is all my stuff gone that's the first important question oh and another question is if I put one of these down I can't put one of these down if I put some of this down let's put it up here where there's some power that sound, I think, was my life support using up one of its po pods and starting on the next one. So that's mildly terrifying because I may run it. Okay, can these not go in space then? I don't see anything saying it can't be used in space. Have I misunderstood how to use these? Um, how to use the scaffold? Do I then need to use something else on it? Used to build space platform. Okay. So can I put inserters? So I can put inserters on it, but I can't put I, ca I can't put a robo port on it apparently. Even though my um, robots seem to be happily working. Okay. Um, so I think, as I was saying earlier, my my main plan for now is to plunder this 
this area up here and to get just to get a bit of a feel for what what's going on up here in in, in Norvis orbit. Uh, so here, these are all the bits of my rocket. I can okay, so I can I can re, I can get lots of scrap back from these and then take that back down with me should I feel the urge. But the main thing I'm interested in, as I was saying, is all these chests. Ch ch there. Ah, spa oh right. So you can put plating on space platforms as well. Let's try that up here. Does that now let me put the um, rubber port down? No, still can't. Can't build in space. I mean, that was that was a big enough area, wasn't it? Oh, okay. You don't need to put that down over. Right. I'm learning <laughs> very, very gradually uh, while I slowly rip through my um, air supply. Is that an asteroid? Yeah. Okay, so deep space is getting attacked by asteroids as well. I mean, okay, I guess that's fair, really. <laughs> you do get um, asteroids flying up pelting around in space so it makes a certain sense but that's going to be something else I need to bring up so oh no you can't oh okay I just wasn't leaving enough space for them fair enough I wasn't leaving enough space so let's put down some storage chests I'll put the bots I've got I said I'll reclaim the, reclaim the bots and I'll, I'll put them in in here then they can just get on with dumping everything from here so there's a load of all the sciences here so that's really quite nice now, one of the things I sh should have brought up, perhaps, it was the um, space science labs. Can I build? Hang on, I've, I've, I'm, I've, um, I'm sort of confusing myself here. This is going to be a rather slow episode, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. The space science labs can only build, be built in the space manufactory, which is the next one up from the assembly machines, and that can that can only be built in space, I believe. So yes, there we go. That has to be made in a space assembly machine. Now, is there one? Yeah, there's one in here. Sweet. Oh, that's quite big. Um, the question is, can I put that on just normal scaffolding? There's a nice, there's a nice big area area of scaffolding to play with. Can I put this down on here? Yes, I can. Awesome. Is it powered? Can I use ground? Yes, I can use ground power poles up here as well. That's quite nice. But this this thing. Is it's pylon substation is, is uh, providing energy to a huge area anyway, so that's not currently an issue. Okay, so this takes all of the science packs up to the, including these these four of the space sciencey ones. But there's a load of them in here. So if I take all of that and put that all of this in here, then that's going to get me started on some of the space science. In fact, what I can also do is take that chest, and put it over here. Put all the rest of the science into it. Okay, so now I should be able to do, I don't know, rocket reusability, for example, or rocket survivability. Mm -hmm. These sound quite um, quite useful. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm going to want to use here. Um, Let's, let's start off with the simple things that I understand, just because I want to make sure this is working and everything's doing things as I expect. And there we go. Okay, so we're doing some... We're doing now, now doing space science. Excellent. How's my power supply up here? So we've got an accumulator. St storing five megajoules. That seems to be absolutely fine. Okay, what, what blew up? But it was on the other... A piece of... Oh, it was on Norvis. Right, okay. Yeah, that's a that's a problem I'm going to have to sort of get used to. That um, the biters are going to carry on eating all of my stuff, even though I'm on a different planet or off the planet at the moment. That's a bit of a pain. Let's oops, let's not fall off the spot, fall off the world. I'm going to build some more of this around because I think if I can work out which of these cargo containers it's in as well, uh, because I reckon that having having a bit more of a solid area to walk around on is going to be quite useful sooner or later. That's not quite what I meant to do, but never mind. It'll, it'll do. Okay, so this is now a bit more of a sort of an air, a safer area to walk in. I've made the satellite a bit bigger, even if I have also made it a bit uglier. 
Right, I think that's probably enough for this episode now because I'm not really doing very much. I'm just sort of walking around looking lost and confused. And, <laughs> and you're not here to watch me doing that. So, I'm going to end the episode here and start trying to build some stuff up here, get an idea of what I want to do. And um, I'll, I'll show you what I've done before I head back to the ground, I expect. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me next time when I'll, um, well, probably still be in space. <laughs> I'll see you then.